Video 2, Inputs and Factors in Espresso. This video covers the inputs and factors in espresso brewing. If you haven't watched the first video, do so, because I have defined terms to save time and hopefully communicate better. Grinding distribution. Grinding coffee involves two plates or cones with teeth, with one spinning closely above or below the other. Most coffee grinders let you control how far apart these plates are in precise increments. Grind adjustment is the most important input for brewing espresso. Adjusting finer has the effect of making the average ground coffee particle smaller than on the coarser settings. Particles vary in size by orders of magnitude. If you look closely, some are huge and some are minuscule. When you make a grind adjustment, you're really just shifting and changing the distribution of differently sized coffee particles. I think of grind setting as an input and grind distribution as a factor. There are still large and small particles after you've adjusted, but the relative frequency of those particle sizes has changed. Different grinders produce different distributions at different settings. Better grinders produce tighter distributions. This is important and something to be desired because at a given flow, a more even particle size will increase the surface area available for extraction. This is equivalent to saying tighter grind distributions grant extra surface area for brewing while keeping flow the same. This is like how sand fills the gaps pebbles make in a jar. Coffee becomes better at clogging flow when there's a mix of tiny, medium, and huge particles. So a tighter distribution lets you reduce the average particle size while having fewer of the smallest particles. This idea might seem counterintuitive. How can one grinder with a smaller average particle size have the same flow as another grinder with a larger particle size, all while having fewer of the smallest particles? It's all about having mostly medium particles, almost none of the tiniest particles, and definitely no big particles. This is why most people talk about fines and boulders from coffee grinders, and that better coffee grinders tend to produce fewer of both. So after all that, the thing to remember is really simple. A finer grind produces more resistance, but if the grind is too fine, much of the flow will be guided through channels. Channels are best avoided when brewing espresso, but we want to grind as fine as we can with less channeling. The best explanation of this is in a barista hustle video, which I'll link in the video description. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that video. Dose. The other primary input to adjust is dose, or how much coffee you put in your port filter. Smaller doses with less coffee grounds produce less resistance because there is less distance to travel. This effect is large, and I can manipulate how long it takes to make a shot by several seconds if I just change the dose by a pinch of espresso. Because of this, I'll often let dose be the final input I consider because it helps me make more precise adjustments than my grinder is able to with its crude settings. But there are limits to using dose to change flow. There isn't as wide an acceptable range of doses as there are grind settings, so I would caution against this being the first method of adjusting the flow of water in your machine. The most ground coffee I would suggest you put in your portafilter is just less than it takes for your shower screen or bolt to indent into them when you tighten the portafilter. The least amount I would suggest you use is the lowest your tamper will evenly tamp into the portafilter, though I would suggest keeping the dose above 80% of the maximum because a thinner puck is more sensitive to channeling. Inputs. As follows are the important inputs affecting espresso extraction. Grind setting. Espresso grinders can adjust coarser and finer. If the grind is too fine, it will provide a very meandering path for water to flow through. A coarser grind provides relatively easier paths through the puck, but less surface area is available for water to dissolve. See the linked video, also from Barista Hustle, to learn more. The main intuition behind grind is to grind as fine as you can while maintaining an even extraction. This is more important than the time it takes to pull a shot. With my bottomless portafilter holder, I can deduce that when espresso only comes out of one side, or it spurts out in little streams, or it has an uneven appearance, I have an even flow. When it comes out mostly at once from each little hole and it appears even, I know I have more even flow. Dose. The dose is the amount of coffee you put in your portafilter in grams, preferably measured to a tenth of a gram. It isn't measured in volume like this, because different masses of coffee can take up the same volume. Smarter people than I have argued that the mass of coffee, assuming the same grind setting, is more closely related than volume to the amount of resistance the puck will provide. Yield. This is the measure of the mass of espresso as it has left the machine. 
I set a goal yield for myself and stop the flow when it hits it. Recipe The recipe combines the dose and the yield, and is an effective way to summarize how you're brewing your espresso. I like shots on the slightly watery side, assuming I'm able to maintain an even extraction throughout, so I usually use a recipe of 1 to 2.5 or 1 to 3, which means for every gram of espresso I put in the port filter, I wait for 2.5 to 3 grams of water to flow out into the cup. Time. The amount of time it takes to brew coffee is important, but I like to think of it as more of a factor, and not an input. This is because the inputs you control can change the time it takes to get the same beverage, but the amount of time you allow to brew doesn't change the extraction, just how far it progresses. If you stop your shots based on the time and not beverage weight, you may induce variation because not every shot flows at the exact same rate as each other. Espresso takes longer to brew if you have a finer grind, but it also takes longer if you do not have the same amount of pressure throughout the brew cycle, or if there are varying levels of channeling, which every shot will have. Puck preparation. Puck preparation is the process between getting ground coffee out of the grinder and starting the brew, and it is fundamental to optimizing great espresso. Change your puck preparation when you observe a problem. I'll describe how I prepare my puck in detail, but this is a procedure you'll need to experiment with yourself to make the best of the equipment you already have. Maybe check out this video for good advice. To prepare my puck, I first put coffee grinds in the grinder and grind them. My old grinder retains some, so I use a brush and a bellows to help collect all the beans into my plastic cup. I usually don't lose more than a tenth of a gram after doing this. Then I shake the container to break up the biggest clumps and distribute the grounds evenly, and further try to break up the clumps. Then I pour it into the portafilter with a few taps, I tap it again to evenly settle it, then I use my distribution tool with a few spins. I've recently changed how I do things, and I'm always looking into ways to improve even further. The main advantage I've come to value from this distribution tool is it guarantees a flat bed because it rotates. I tamp this with my tamper to compress a little further, less than a millimeter. Then I make sure it's clean and insert the portafilter holder. I do this gently because espresso pucks are fragile and heavy taps can break them apart, virtually guaranteeing channeling and poor uneven extraction. So to recap, Espresso is a beverage that benefits from pressure because it lets you grind finer than if you only had gravity to pull the water down. A column of water flows through the coffee puck, and the more evenly thick and level the puck is, and the more even its resistance, the more evenly water will flow. The distribution of the grind governs how fine your average particle can be before the quality of the extraction decreases. The next video covers the steps of pulling a shot, and my tips for maximizing your equipment.